Hello, my name is Michael O'Keefe, aka The Movie List. If you enjoyed this interview and want to hear more top-notch film industry conversations, please press the thumbs up, subscribe to this channel, and hit the bell to stay in the know. How you doing, sir? I'm good. So you are Alan Hoffman, am I correct? Yeah, it's all um, <laughs> it's all a little crazy and cross international, and in, uh, in time and space, so it's a little confusing. But uh, yeah, my name is uh, Alan Hoffmanis. Uh, here in the U.S. in Uganda, I am uh, Alan Sali Oyinchima Musaja Wakabaka and Mefani Yesu Muganda laptop. Okay. Uh, and now they added Bernie because wow. uh, when I had a full mustache playing a commando, they thought I looked like uh, like Weekend at Bernie's, you know? Uh, right. And right. It's of course, of clearly, you know. Uh, <laughs> so that they added that. That's the new one. All right. So you, sir? <laughs> for for those who don't know. For the virgin ears, what is Wakaliwood? Uh -huh. Yeah, it's it's a ridiculous. Um, what Wakaliwood is something that should not exist. Uh, it it really it, no, it re it really shouldn't. I mean, the idea that there's this village um, that doesn't really even have electricity now. Now it's okay, but there's no running water. Uh, power was maybe two days a week and such. Uh, have been making action films for about fifteen years. That uh, that have just now premiered at Museum of Modern Art and going on tour is uh, is a pretty bizarre notion, um, and we're fighting to get Isaac's uh, visas and just even technically it's still difficult with internet uh, and electricity. So uh, so he asked me to talk um, at times when when it's when it's easier. But what so what Hollywood? What Kaliga is this village uh, near Kampala? which is the capital of Uganda. Uh, it's a very tiny thing. Um, that's the village. Wakali Wood is the dream. And Isaac Nabwana, this Ugandan filmmaker from uh, the slums, as they call it, you know, the slums and ghetto, um, he's been making action films uh, for over 15 years. And, but he's using what they got. So the computers at that time, uh, for, like, for the first 12 years or so, uh, were built out of spare parts. They were using real blood. Um, the guns are carved out of uh, wood or just scraps of metal. Uh, building a, a Huey HU-1 helicopter full size with a twin diesel engine uh, as a prop. Uh, it's it's pretty amazing. And uh, in 2011, well, in 2010, really, in 2010, uh, they went viral. Uh, and he's not quite sure how it happened exactly, but a couple trailers of his got online. And you know, and he would get millions of views. And in 2011, I was in a bar on St. Mark's Place in New York City. And uh, my girl had just left me the day I bought the wedding ring. Uh, and to cheer me up, my uh, my friend showed me this trailer for Who Killed Captain Alex, Uganda's first action movie. Um, except I wasn't laughing. I was like, well, what the hell is this? You know, and they were like, oh, it's some funny thing, Uganda. And I'm like, but no, but what is this? Because I, I thought it was genius. And, and my background is in film production and I was a festival program director for a number of years, so you know I know how films are made, and I, I kind of uh, I enjoy presenting them, you know. But I'm looking at this, and, and nothing makes sense because if you have no money, you know, you do what everyone else does. You you make a love story, you do a family reunion in your parents' place upstate. Like you don't make a war film with helicopters and 200 people and everything. And I couldn't get it out of my head, and there was no information. Uh, lots and lots of chat rooms and people were talking about them but no one had information no one knew if the films were real is this Saturday Night Live Uganda or, or something um, so I did what any I guess rational person would do is that I bought a ticket to Africa uh, and I tracked him down in the village um, and that's it and then I ended up selling everything I had and, and moving into the slum and that was eight years ago uh, when I first went uh, with the mission to get the films to the world because I felt that if he was born anywhere else, he would have been famous 20 years ago. And he deserved to be part of the conversation. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And I, <laughs> I thought the movies were very funny. The uh, both I saw Bad Black and Who Killed yeah. Captain Alex, and I thought they were hilarious. And I was wondering, where do they get that sense of humor? It's it's a funny thing. Like the very And, and you could ask anyone uh, who's been to Uganda. And it's, I'm talking Uganda because, you know, the, all the countries are, are different, you know, within Africa. But Uganda, their greatest exports, it's not going to be coffee, and it's not going to be whatever, jewelry or trade. It's going uh, to be comedy and action movies. Because the entire 
the entire country, it's like it's full of stand-up comedians. And I'm totally serious. Like anyone, you could be in a traffic jam and the jokes passing back and forth. It's um, they're just they're just very 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 funny as a whole, and and they appreciate it, you know. And in a way, thank God because uh, the life there, you know, it's not easy, man. Uh, yes, of course, maybe if you're more upper class, um, it's easier, you know. But for 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 the guys, it's not easy. And say for me being there, like if they were a bunch of assholes, <laughs> <laughs> screw that. I'm not shitting in a bucket for seven years, you know, for a bunch <laughs> of bricks. <laughs> but like, like, but they're they're freaking awesome. And and it's not just like the comedy itself. It's like it's a very uh, self-aware kind of self-deprecating, but at the same time. There's such pride, you know, like they love Uganda. It's the greatest country in all of Africa. You know, it's like everything is it's the best. We're the best. Right. But yeah, we don't have, you know, electricity. But but then we're almost the best then. We're, yeah. it's, it's wonderful. And so where it comes from, God knows, because the country has suffered so much, say, in the past 50 years from, you know, the Idi Amin regime and then the Civil War and Abote period and then, Goddamn, there was a whole AIDS epidemic, you know, into the '90s. So they've they've suffered as um as a, as a country, you know. But my God, uh, they're funny as hell. <laughs> Definitely. So is is the dream uh, to to take what well, Hollywood into Hollywood? Are is are we going to see some more mainstream recognition from the uh, you know the the suits in Hollywood? Let me tell you, that's Hollywood's dream, man. <laughs> they need us. They they and everyone knows it. They need us. Yeah. Uh, you know, because actually it's a funny thing is that um, what people say a lot, you know, if you go on, on comments on YouTube and things, is that it, it's like it reminds people, well, Hollywood reminds people why they like movies in the first place. Like why they, and especially action movies. And they say that. They say like Hollywood films, for the most part, have just become really dry, you know, especially when they're trying to tell you you're having fun. But they're just not. I mean, I think something like John Wick uh, is also an example. That, that can be a well, Hollywood film. Something that that they're, that they're clearly enjoying. All right. So you were saying uh, that the films are, are surreal. Right. Uh, I guess you're asking whether they're surreal or perhaps this is actually everyday normal life in Uganda. Like, is that how they feel about like the regular life in Uganda? Yeah. It, it's it's Isaac. I'm I'm telling you. I I was crazy talking about this for eight years, but now it's starting to come out and people are starting to realize. I think Isaac is a talent on a world scale on a global scale. If he was born anywhere else, he would have been famous 25 years ago. And when you ask him about it, like he says what he's going for is like he's not trying to make them real because real reality can be fun, but it's also kind of boring. You know, you're opening a door, walking down a hallway. Is that he wants it to feel real, you know? And so his default is what is entertainment and, and what makes you jump or what makes you shocked or laugh or anything. They're really, really, it's his things, what he talks about is that it comes from life, but it's really condensed. You know, it's like it jumps to only the cool parts because, and again, this sounds crazy, but what he's doing is a form of film criticism <laughs> because, look, he did not see his first film until his 20s, to put that in perspective. Um, he grew up not with movies, but with, but with the stories of movies because his brothers would sneak into what's called a video hall and it's like a dirt floor with a TV set. And that's where they'd watch Rambo and Schwarzenegger and things. So he grew up not watching them, but from the stories that his brothers would tell about the movies. There's this big guy, his name is Chuck Norris, and he punches you and he kicks and you fly. So he had these incredible images of what, what films are. And then when he was around 21 or so, he saved enough money from making bricks to buy a, uh, a, a DVD player and a TV set, you know, and so... He said, okay, let's watch these Chuck Norris films. And he got really pissed. He's like, yeah, okay, the action's, the action's pretty good, but why is all this talking? Like, why, why is he having breakfast? I know he has breakfast. Why do I need to see that? Why do I need to see him get the car keys? I know he's got it. Like, you know, you just cut to what's important, you know? And so he got so frustrated that he's like, I'm going to show people how to make an action film because it's not that way. Too much talking. <laughs> So on one hand, you ask him, it's very much life. Like you see it with the children, uh, how they're on the street, how there's like, you know, some guy, like a, almost like a pimp, right? Taking the money from them as they're begging. All that, it almost it's almost documentary, you know? Uh, we've been actually accused of abusing children in this film um, because they don't understand that they could be such good actors. Uh, actually, people were thinking that we're abusing our own children to make a film about not abusing your own children. 
um, because they did, because it looked too real to them. So it's this wonderful combination between like really hard reality and this this almost dream state, you know, this this complete exaggeration of of, of life and humor and comedy. Yeah. It's going to take a few. I think it's, it's well, Hollywood's only the second one now to, to be translated and come out in the West. But I think when there's about four or five, there's going to be a reckoning. You know, I think people are going to realize, holy crap, he's a genius. <laughs> and I'm waiting on it. So how long does it take him to like conceive of a movie and then get it out of the market? Um, things are different now in the world, meaning with phones, right? You can, you can just sit down at a phone and make a film, just turn it on for two hours. But I think he has, he doesn't know it. And I, but I think he has like the world record. He, um, they wrote, produced, shot, directed, edited, marketed, printed, distributed in like five days, one of their films. That's Return of Uncle Ben on. Uh, it's insane. So it, if they're motivated, like if Isaac, because Isaac is a slave, uh, like to passion in a way, you know, when he gets an idea, uh, and, and we're ready, he, he has to do it and we rip it out. But to give an idea, so he has on one hand, you could do a film like that for five days. Bad Black is eight years door to door is what that was. That was from the day I showed up because when I showed up, I wanted to play, and he's like, "Crap! If we beat the crap, if we beat the crap out of a white guy in a movie, we can sell it. That's hot. I can put that into any movie and be a dream sequence, and people will buy it." So that that was 2011, and then MoMA is 2019. So that's eight years. So you, you can do things without money, but sometimes it takes time. Um, so it's it's a mix. It's either really quick or or studies it, but typically, he will he can have five, six, or seven films shooting at one time. And the reason is, this is traditionally, because things are changing now with, with a bit of um, success, meaning, you know, selling T-shirts and things, um, is that uh, it's almost like a pirate ship captain where people want to work. And if he's editing a film for two months, the actors have nothing to do and they'll leave and, and they want to be there, but they also want to work, you know. And so it's like he would do it like that. Okay, we're, we're, we're shooting these two movies. I'm editing this. We're building props for that. We're rehearsing over here. We're writing as a group like that to, to keep everyone busy and happy because everyone ultimately, everyone's there because they're, they're really creative. You know, they all really want to do this. Um, so that was how it survived is doing like, you know, five, six, seven films at one time. The question now that Isaac asks himself really is like what happens if i'm able to focus on one movie for two years you know where there's enough money coming in it's not a lot for the western standards but if there's like 50 grand say what is that movie like where you can get the kung fu guys to focus on just on one scene for like two months you know the, the way like the matrix could when they were shooting right they, they could just break it down and just over rehearse like build the sets build the props and like like what kind of movie would that be and on one hand it won't be Bad Black or Captain Alex say, but it sure as hell will not be Hollywood. <laughs> It'll be something different. And I live there, and I have no idea what that movie would be. But uh, but hell, I want to see it, you know. And so when you ask like with with Hollywood, yeah, actually we're getting we're getting calls. It's it's a real thing. Um, and again, if Isaac was born in Brooklyn, he would have been famous decades ago. And and what we're fighting with, and it like we get it, like we understand this problems with visas and things because this is a new idea, and. I think one of the questions with us, say for business, say with Hollywood, is can you do business, not just with the third world, but as Isaac says, like the, the, the ghettos, they're the third world of the third world, right? So can you do business with them? And the answer is yes, <laughs> you know, this, but these are all new things, you know, like this, just, just on that level. So um, there are people are reaching out, uh, believe me, and it's just, it just may take some time, but I think the future is, yeah, if Isaac wants to do a Hollywood film, um, there's no reason. I, I think. I think the answer is there's no reason he couldn't. Uh, you know, you make like a six-year plan, eight-year plan, whatever. But there's no reason. Um, but he has to want it. You know, he has to frankly make a decision whether he wants to make films for fifty bucks or you know, half a million. Well, I hope it happens. Uh, the, yeah, right. It should <laughs> like, happen. Why not? You know? uh, it's, it's a proven track record. To, to I mean, he's he's in Uganda. He's yeah. in Uganda doing this. Yeah, so, and, and you with know, nothing. a lot thing with, with, with right nothing, and it's not just Uganda. It's like in the bottoms of Uganda, as he <laughs> says, like in the most difficult parts. Yeah, that's most that, challenging parts. 
That's resourceful. You can't say that's not resourceful. So, okay. No. So, thank you for your time. Uh, very, I really appreciate it, Alan. And any yeah. departing words you'd like to give? Yeah, look, uh, we're on tour, man. And and the idea is, uh, yeah, it sucks that you know you have me presenting it. Isaac wanted me to do it because I live there and I know the, I know the story and I can share it. But the ultimate thing with this, uh, what Isaac and everyone feels is that anyone can be part of this. But I mean, like, really part of it. Like, you can be. Uh, as we're doing this tour, we're killing everyone. You know, like in the theaters, the people, like if you want to be in the movie, you can be in the movie. Like you could become a Ugandan action movie star without leaving Toronto, say. We come to your city, we do the screening, and then we could blow you up from a helicopter or whatever. Isaac directs the scene on Skype from Uganda, and then the footage we shoot, we cut into the next film. Whoa. So, like, it's insane. So, like, we want the, he wants the world to become Ugandan action movie stars without even having to leave. Detroit. Well, I'm, I'm here in Ottawa, Ontario, and if we could do that at my radio station while I'm doing the <laughs> broadcast, that would be incredible. Isaac will say, of course, you deserve to die. <laughs> you deserve <laughs> to be part of this. Okay. But that's the idea, you know, is that it's, he's like, he's crowdsourcing, not say just money the way like Kickstarter can do, but cr- cr- crowdsourcing talent, like, like fans, you know, like people who just, who want to be part of something. And it's so amazing, and the only this could only have happened now, because of uh, internet. You know, he was ahead of the of the of the curve, is what happened. He was ahead of himself, of the world. You know, like now because of internet, like people are it's self organizing. Fans are connecting to him and opportunities. But say when I first came in 2011, that was it. You know, it was just where he was on his own, uh, and very happy, because you know people loved it in the village. But this idea of a global community a global production studio uh it's it's taken whatever i don't know how many millions of years of evolution <laughs> to get <laughs> to this point where we're all ugandan all right well thank you so much thank you sir all right take care bye